to cut a very long story short, we had to do the missing persons. We started doing a search ourselves. Two different families who lost their loved ones. Both felt let down by the police. I think they looked at my daughter's address, which was a council flat, um, and thought they knew who she was. Two women of colour out doing who knows what. There was a national outcry when Sarah Everard was murdered, but this tragedy led to uncomfortable questions for the families of Nicole Smallman, Viva Henry and Jan Mustafa. Why didn't their cases receive the same level of attention? And did the police investigations fail them? Mina Smallman's two daughters, Bieber and Nicole, were murdered by a stranger in a park after celebrating Bieber's birthday. It was over a day until they were found. And when they were, it was alleged that police officers took selfies with the bodies. The people who are supposed to protect, honour and do the right thing took advantage. Mum of three, Jan Mustafa, was missing for a year. Her cousin Aisha conducted searches herself, even having to make her own posters because she didn't feel as though she was taken seriously. Obviously, she was a, she was a foreign national and obviously she, at the time, she did have a bit of a chaotic lifestyle. We'd get sightings sometimes and they'd say, a girl fitting her description is coming out of a house that she used to go to. So obviously straight away we'd ring the police, this is what happened. They'd like, oh, you're looking too much into it. I said, well, I'm gonna go there then. And I'd be knocking on people's doors, asking if they've got CCTV to give the police the footage to see if it was her. Jan's body was eventually found a year later in a freezer with another murdered woman, Henriette Zooks. Aisha felt like the police missed vital clues that indicated who her killer was, Zahid Yunus, a convicted sex offender. So I think the most upsetting thing for the family at the moment is knowing that five weeks after she'd went missing, on her phone records that the police had got, there was a phone call between Jan and Zahid, and they never even said to us, that sit down and say, right, we've gone through Jan's phone, this, this and this is who she spoke to last, do you know them? No, we don't. And if they'd done that at the beginning, we might not be here today. They went there, she might have been alive when they knocked on the door. Both families feel that if they were white, they might have been treated differently by the police and media. Bieber, Nicole and Jan's names are now part of an ever-growing list of women in the UK who've been murdered by a man or where a man is the principal suspect. This year, the total so far is 109. That's as many as the whole of 2020. But not all cases have received the same level of attention. These high profile cases helped foster the perception in some communities that the way your case is investigated depends on the color of your skin. Even in death, even in death, racism, rears its ugly head. Ngozi runs Sister Space, a domestic abuse charity supporting women of African and Caribbean heritage. Their research found that 86% of women of African and or Caribbean heritage in the UK have either been a victim of domestic abuse or know a family member who have been assaulted. However, only 57% of victims said they would report the abuse to the police. There is a culture of not believing, stereotyping, and just generally ignoring the plight of black women. These are the things that stop black women from reporting domestic abuse. Sister Space is now calling for Valerie's Law, named after Valerie Ford, who was murdered with her young daughter by her former partner in 2014. She had previously asked the police for help after her ex had threatened to burn down the house with her in it. But this was recorded as a threat to the property. It's a petition that seeks to make training around black women mandatory for police and for the violence against women and girls, the Vowag sector, because that's where the problem lies. However, the government said it was not necessary to mandate training because existing training on domestic abuse should already include recognising the specific needs for individuals due to ethnicity or cultural backgrounds. But a spokesperson from the National Police Chiefs Council told ITV News, 
We are conscious of the additional barriers black and minoritized women may face in reporting abuse, and we are working hard to address them. Reclaim These Streets, an organization set up in the wake of Sarah Everard's murder, have separately called for both anti-racism and anti-sexism training for the police. They haven't exactly said no, but no one said yes either. I think it's a core ask because if we can't be confident in the people who are supposed to be there to protect us, to do the absolute best they can for women and for communities of colour, and those two are completely intertwined in terms of access to justice and the way that they're viewed by the criminal justice system, then it's really hard to trust that they're going to be doing the absolute best thing they can do. Caroline Noakes, Chair of the Women and Equality Select Committee, believes the pattern of case handling is all too common and calls for non-biased training. It's not until all the police service is prepared to look at itself and say, look, we've clearly had a different response to case A to case B. Why is that? Why are we continuing to do that? And I think, you know, a certain measure of introspection and understanding why that continues to happen. The Met Police, who investigated both Jan Mustafa, Nicole Smallman and Bieber Henry's murders, told ITV News that policing is complex and challenging. Where we get it wrong, we welcome scrutiny. And where there are complaints, we take these incredibly seriously and expect to be held to account for our actions, including through independent investigations by the Independent Office for Police Conduct. Both cases are subject to ongoing investigations. As people gather to commemorate Sabina Nessa's life, the latest victim in what is being described as a pandemic of gender-based violence, campaigners are asking the public why women from marginalised communities and not given the same support and coverage. They say an act of violence against one woman is an act of violence against all.